absolutely amazing. 59 grams of sugar. That's 15 teaspoons in a cup of coffee for this thing. All right, guys, what that equals, it's six bowls of Frosted Flakes. Imagine, that's half a box. Sit down, put half a box of Frosted Flakes in your bowl, and get at it. And that's what this one unicorn Frappuccino is going to deliver. You want to talk about a sugar high. That bad boy will have you bouncing like you never dreamed. Unbelievable. Too, too funny. Now, on the science thing, science side of things here, it's time to kiss the frog, apparently. Frog saliva from India, a remote village in India, has been shown to destroy several strains of the flu virus. One of the peptides they found in the frog saliva you can use in human beings. It doesn't destroy our red blood cells. The other versions that kill the flu will actually destroy our cells as well. But this one they found, they call it uramin, is going to be apparently a, a game changer. They're looking at this now saying, gosh, we've got this peptide, we can reproduce it, we can produce medications that they'll start using in antivirals and things of that nature. Now it's not 100%. It doesn't get rid of all of the different strains of flu, but it takes care of some of them. So it just shows you, you know, sometimes we go back in time and we look for things. And if you realize medicine, if you look at healthcare, if you look at the drug industry, they turn to nature a lot looking for the next big thing, the next cure. All right, well, if that's the case, if they're always turning to nature, you know, your statin drugs came from nature, most of your painkillers came from nature, the majority of your antivirals and antibiotics all came from nature. So if you look at that and say, well, then why would the field of homeopathy and the field of herbology that studies plants and nature not be valid? How could those not be? You know, you look at the field of homeopathy 150 years ago, oh, they're quacks, they're nuts, they're crazy. But that's how we learned how to defeat malaria. Welcome to them. See, there's a lot of things out there, guys. We, we get this idea that we're smarter than the generation that came before us. And we, we propagate this over and over and over again. Oh, if it wasn't for us, you know. Uh, well, how did we get here if the generation before us was so dumb? How do we all survive? How do we all make it this far? Look around, from your computer, to your iPhone, to your television, to your car. Somebody had to build that originally, right? We all learn from those experiences. The problem is we forget. We forget the learning curve that was needed to get us to that next step. You see it with the pyramids, right? There's nobody around today that can tell you how one was built. They have no idea. Stonehenge, the bunch of big blocks in England, but nobody has a clue how they got there. They got theories and this and that. They're like, God, how did, how did they move? Oh, and you're right, exactly, Robert. Or what they're even for. You know, there's theories and this and that. But the idea is, how do they, how do they build a pyramid? How do they move those large blocks? Easter Island, those large heads on there, right, that weigh tons. How do they ever move those things? So we don't know, right? But the, the generation then did. They knew exactly how to do it. It's just that kind of died out a little bit. We lost that little bit. And in losing that technology and that little bit of information, you got to rediscover. I don't know that I really create anything in my practice. I just, I rediscover things periodically. And I look back, you know, I'm getting ready to do some work with uh, Irish medicine right now. I've got a, a young lady I've been chatting with quite a bit from Ireland, and she runs a college of Irish medicine. And we've been talking quite a bit. It intrigues me. It's all about herbology and how to use plants and herbs for gastrointestinal problems and blood pressure and all these things. It's fascinating. And to be able to have an opportunity to bring some of that back into the healthcare field, because a lot of it's been lost, it is really phenomenal to me. So I'm looking forward to it. We got one more here, and this is exciting. Apple and blood sugar. The company, Apple, they're trying to develop a way that their watches can monitor blood sugar accurately without doing a finger stick. They're trying to do it through light frequencies and waves. And I've seen things like this in the past, but no one's really been able to pull it off successfully. If they pull this off, this will be a game changer for diabetics globally. Can you imagine just being able to put your watch on and tell your blood sugar immediately without sticking you, without having, 
a game changer. Now, why is Apple pushing for this? It's currently a 12 billion, with a B, billion dollar a year industry, blood sugar is. 12 billion. So if they can get into this, Apple's happy people. Those iPhones, those iWatches, all those little things. There are 30 million Americans currently with diabetes. Hey, what an amazing thing. All right, guys, I'm Dr. Sean. We'll take a break. We'll be back in just a moment.